So where does this where does this leave us politically? People say, what are we? What is there anything out there besides this going? On? There there are things happening. The, the, the Mueller investigation steaming along, and there are a few additional developments uh, uh, in it, and there are still people uh, discussing various aspects of it. There's nothing really earth shattering new in it, but it's trucking along out there. But the midterm elections is another subject that that is routinely popping up here in drive-by media news reports because the drive-bys are getting concerned that the once gigantic advantage the Democrats had in what's called a generic ballot for the 2018 midterms is gone. The Democrats had a 15-point lead last December in the generic ballot. And what that tests is party preference. In the upcoming November elections for the House and the Senate, are you more inclined to vote Republican or Democrat? And the Democrats were leading in those polls by plus 15. And so the media would say, this is it. This is it. The the, the Democrats can win back the House. The Democrats were saying it. This is it. This is it. We're going to win back the House. And then we're going to impeach Trump. And then all is going to go back to normal. And then the tax bill was proposed. And the media started lying to people about it, telling people that the taxes were going to go up. For 80% of the American people, taxes are going to go up. That Trump is lying to you. The Republicans are lying. The only people getting tax cuts are people that don't need them. Big corporations and the rich. And so the tax bill polling showed that 75% of the American people were opposed to the tax cut. And so the media said, wow, it's getting even better. The Democrats are plus 15, and we've made sure that a majority of Americans oppose and don't like Trump's big tax cut. So they're on a roll. They're sitting there thinking that they've got it in the bag. And they're starting to talk like it's in the bag, and they're starting to act like it's in the bag. And they're already doing news stories of Washington's going to be like without Trump. And then something unforeseen happened. The American people began to notice that they were, in fact, getting a big tax cut. More and more Americans began to realize they had more money every pay period than they had a month ago. And so the polling on the tax bill took a dramatic turn. To the point now where it is 51% and climbing who like and approve of the tax bill. Now, as an aside, this is an indication of the power the media still has. They were able to lie to the country at large and and convince 75% of likely voters that they were going to get a tax increase. Now the economic news, the growth is is roaring. The stock market's going through some up and downs right now, but it's still in a positive uh, trajectory. Consumer confidence is reaching all-time highs. And more and more polling on the midterms is showing great advantages for the Republicans. And so some of the enthusiasm for the Democrats is beginning to wane. And a I wouldn't call it a panic yet. But deep concern has settled in over the Democrats and the media. Now, crazy Bernie is upset. He has learned that Mrs. Clinton was working with the Russians to undermine his campaign, too. And crazy Bernie Sanders is out there demanding to know why Hillary Clinton didn't help him, didn't do more to stop the Russians when they were trying to hurt him. Not supposed to get that angle of this. The Russians are supposed to be helping Trump. What were the Russians doing trying to trying to trying to help crazy Bernie or help Hillary? And, and, and that's not the way it was supposed to go. The Russians were not helping Hillary, they were helping Trump. And yet crazy Bernie has learned the Russians were helping Hillary. So as I see it, here's the Democrat platform for the midterm elections. The Democrats are now campaigning against tax cuts. Pelosi continues to portray these tax cuts as crumbs. She did a town hall. Where, Snurdly, where was, was Pelosi when she did this town hall recently? Was it Phoenix or was, it, was she out in California? I forget where it was, but she was doing a, 
uh, one of her usual criticisms of the tax bill, claiming it was only for the very wealthy and the well-to-do and so forth. And somebody in the audience, how much are you worth? How much are you worth? You got a lot of money, something like that. And Pelosi said, it's not about me. This is not about me. The point is that people started shooting back, firing back at all of this because the Democrats continue to campaign against tax cuts. And remember, these are now seen overwhelmingly favorably, and there's not a single Democrat that voted for them. So there's not a single Democrat who's going to be able to claim any credit for this. As a result of tax cuts, the American people have much more disposable income, much more discretionary income. The Democrats are also now campaigning on repealing, damaging, harming, whatever, the Second Amendment. The Democrats are at full speed being seen wanting to take guns away from people. The Democrats do not realize that that is a minority position in this country. They continue to believe that the things they support and believe are supported by a majority of the American people. So what are the Democrats doing? They are campaigning against tax cuts. They are campaigning against disposable income, meaning they're having to tell people that those bigger paychecks are not real. And the tax cut, you really shouldn't count on it. And it ain't going to last very long because when the Democrats get in office, they'll wipe it out. They don't have Trump colluding with Russia. They built the 2000 midterms on that premise that they were finally, by this campaign, going to prove that Trump had colluded with Russia. And that alone was going to get rid of Trump. Not only is there no evidence that Trump colluded with Russia, there is evidence of serious malfeasance from Obama's Department of Justice and Obama's FBI and collusion between Hillary Clinton and the Russians. The Democrats are going to be forced to defend all of this. They're on the record now as opposing and lying about the tax cuts. A, that they were happening, and B, that they're beneficial. The Democrats are now going to have to run against a growing, burgeoning economy. They're going to have to defend a position in which they tell the American people this isn't real, that they shouldn't believe it, and that disaster lurks around the corner. They have boxed themselves into a corner with a platform or agenda that is entirely negative, based on lies, and is propped up by the one thing that they think is going to launch them back into power, and that is hatred for Donald Trump. They are so lost in their hatred, poisoned by it, that it's real, and they believe a majority of Americans feel the same way. And they're wrong about that. While all of this is happening, Trump is actually accomplishing significant things. He may not be, he may not be a personality people like. They might not like his tweeting. They might not like his mannerisms or what have you but he's appointing great people to the courts. He is going to have, Trump is going to have a serious proposal on dealing with these school shootings, something the Democrats have never come up with. The Democrats owned the House and Senate from 2009 to 2011, the first two years of Obama's administration, the Republicans could not have stopped anything, and the Democrats did not even propose a single piece of legislation on guns or the NRA. There are a lot of Democrats that take money from the NRA, by the way. They don't want you to know it, but they're there. Trump is already reminding people of this. 
He's already reminding the Democrats had every opportunity. The Republicans could not have stopped them. It's how we ended up with Obamacare. The Republicans did not have enough votes to matter. If every Republican, well, every Republican did, vote against Obamacare in the Senate, it didn't matter. There weren't enough to stop it. The Republicans couldn't even come up with 60 votes to stop debate. They could not stop a thing. If the Democrats really wanted to do something about the NRA and guns, they had two years of unobstructed power to do it, and they didn't even propose it. And so now it's very easy to point out to people, but now wait, 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 wait just a minute here. You're telling me that the first two years of the Obama administration, and even through the whole eight, I mean, here you've got, you've got your Nirvana candidate. You've got the guy that's going to roll back the rising sea levels. You've got the guy that's going to save the earth. you got the guy that's going to save America. The guy's going to save the world. The guy's going to end war. The guy's going to make all nations love one another. And they didn't make one move on guns. And now all of a sudden, after the next school shooting, somehow this is the fault of the NRA and Marco Rubio and every other Republican walking the planet, in addition to some people in the media they want to rip into. Let them try. They do not hold a majority position on anything they're touting, including this. Despite how it might appear in the media, they do not have a majority position on it. They have a a platform and agenda that they have to defend and promote that is entirely apocalyptic. It is doom. It is gloom. It is the end of the world. Throw climate change into and what they believe about that and what they say about it. And there is not a single thing that they can be optimistic about except getting rid of Trump, which they think is something that turns their people into big, positive agitators. Yeah, it was a Pelosi town hall in Phoenix where she was heckled about her own wealth and said that that didn't matter. We're we're not here to talk about that. Quick timeout. We will continue much more straight ahead. Don't go away. 